<laughs> if you saw the last episode of the Schoolie Building Guide, you saw us take this 1996 Thomas bus, cut the roof off of it, raise it 12 inches, and weld it all back together. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you the tools, tips, tricks, and materials you'll need to hang fresh skins on your newly roof raised bus. My goal in this video is to make this stage as easy for you as possible, so let's get started. A few things I want to go over just right off the hop. What materials you want to use for skinning the bus, kind of what the rules of thumb are when you're thinking about laying out your skins. At my shop and for all of our roof raises, we use a product called galvanized steel. It's not galvanized, although it is galvanized, it then goes through an annealing process which is where we get the term galvanized from. Two benefits to doing that. The annealing process makes the steel easier to curve and shape, which is handy for going around the corners in the front and the back. And it also kind of opens up the pores of the metal. So when you go to paint it, you don't have to etch it. A trade name for this material is also paint lock, I believe. But basically you can get right to priming it uh, without having to etch it, which is really nice. It saves you a step. I don't recommend using mild steel, just regular steel, mostly because you want the corrosion resistance. The buses originally were made with, with galvanized steel. And the reason for that is anywhere you get a scratch or the paint isn't perfectly applied, you're still protected from corrosion. And I learned this the hard way on my first bus. The person I hired to help me do the roof raise back when I was just learning the ropes chose mild steel and that was really regrettable because it was rusting before I even got the darn thing home. Save yourself the headache and do the galvanized steel. The next thing is we really like using quarter inch rivets for our roof raises and the type of rivet we use is called, it's a structural blind quarter inch rivet. We get ours from a company called Avdel. If you're unsure what to use, schoolie.com, again, coming through in the pinch, they sell those rivets. And the size drill bit you want to use is a 17 64ths, which is 1 64th bigger than a quarter inch. We found that a quarter inch drill bit oftentimes is too tight for the rivet to easily go through. So we went up one size. I'll show you some images and examples of those materials and then you'll know what to look for when you're specking out your skins and all those materials for your build. All right, we're stepping into Ty's corner and uh, I wanted to show you what I was talking about with these materials. So these are the rivets we like to use and they are structural rivets and they're closed on the end and that's really crucial because some rivets, when you set them, they pull this out and that leaves an open end and that obviously would mean that you have thousands of tiny holes going through the side of your bus. Not ideal. This is a quarter inch. We shoot these on. This is a rivet by a rivet, a pop rivet gun by a company called Snap, made by Sunex Tools. I don't know what the company or the name is. They're pretty good. If you're only doing one bus, though, honestly, get yourself a Harbor Freight quarter inch pop rivet gun. Uh, it'll probably break a couple times on you, but for the difference in price, I would say it's worth it. Boom. High speed steel. Cobalt drill bits, size 17 64ths. Just go ahead and buy a 10 pack. You'll need them all. These are all the skins for that bus. I went ahead and ordered them pre-cut because, well, why not? But if you can tell, it doesn't look like regular galvanized finish. It's got a nice kind of matte quality to it, soft ready for paint and this is definitely the way to go we use 18 gauge some people do 16 i wouldn't go thinner than 18 and honestly i probably wouldn't do 16 unless you just want to spend extra money and add a bunch of weight to your bus ty's been hard at work back here uh, adding the supplemental framing to capture the rear of the bus this is a one by two 16 gauge steel tube and you can see we just added a header across here and that's gonna catch the rivet line that was once down there on our skin and then tied that in with some extensions back down to the original frame. So our skin is gonna attach here to this cross member and it's gonna wrap all the way across and come around to that one. And then we're gonna have 
a little bitty square patch here and then we'll get on with the full size sheets down the side of the bus. I know it doesn't look like much, but this here is gonna become the, the rear cap of the bus. And Ty has been kind enough to go ahead and make some marks. So here we've got our center line denotation there. Um, he marked what edge is the factory edge, which is nice, because that's gonna be the straight one that we wanna have shown. And then over here we've marked the start of our radius and then the completion of our radius on the left. And it's the same on the other side. So what we're gonna do is feed this through, this is called a slip roll, and we're gonna use that to bend and put the radius in. And I'll go ahead and set the camera up so that you can see how we do that. And uh, it's a little bit of a guess and check, but we've got it down pretty good. And then it's gonna go up on the back of that bus, hopefully this afternoon. We worked our magic and ran it through the slip roll. It's kind of like a, a pasta machine for steel, but basically there, it's a it's called a I think a tri roller slip roll. You've got a roller here, roller here, roller here, pyramid roller. That's what it is, and you adjust the distance of this upward by tightening that that screw there and this screw here and it lets you get a shape on that steel. And uh, I think we hit our lines pretty well, so we're gonna do a test fit, me and Mr. Holter, and we'll see how it looks. All right, one of my favorite tools if you're doing a roof raise is a nice set of scaffolding. And honestly, you can get these quite cheap at the good old Harbor Freight, no shame in that. So this is where our back cap is going and we just did a test fit and we were happy happy enough with the results to go ahead and start on the cleanup so we're going to be removing all this goop scraping off all that old sealant and then we're going to go ahead and kind of scuff sand around those holes and get some primer on those old rivet holes and then uh, in a couple of places things got a little aggressive with the old air chisel so we're gonna get the planishing hammer out and kind of see if we can bring those back around to flat. And uh, we'll get a coat of primer on all this steel. And then looks like first thing, well not tomorrow, but first thing Monday, we'll hang this sheet up. It's a new day and uh, you know, we did all the prep I said we were gonna do. And we got the Trace Amigos together so we're gonna just pop this sheet up and see if we can get it clamped into place. Maybe get a few rivets in it and then eat some lunch. Sounds pretty good. installed and uh, I'll take you in a little bit closer and show you what it looks like with the finished product. I think for a lot of folks the biggest issue you're gonna have that might drive you crazy is reusing all of the factory rivet holes which is what we do otherwise you're gonna be filling in all these holes. The problem is at every bus I've seen it's like the people who work there they don't really care too much about getting those rivet lines straight and so you'll see on these lines they're just they're wavy, wavy gravy. But now that we have the back cap done, the next thing we've got to do is just start throwing our sheets on, going down both sides. You wanna work your way from the back forward so that you get good lap. You want to always be going over the rearward sheet. So as you're going down the highway, the breeze is just, you know, shooting all of the moisture and debris, you know, down the, down the lap, you know? Here you can see the fruits of our labors. And it does look pretty good, but if you get in close here, you can kind of see that these lines, 
they're a little bit wavy gravy which isn't that big of a deal honestly it's more of a thing that'll drive you crazy and then you'll kind of forget it was ever like that it gets really bad going around this side and going around corners but so Ty is gonna make up the little square that goes there and then we're gonna go all the way down the side we're gearing up to start hanging skins and you'll notice we've got an issue there's no holes in our hat channel extension segments for the rivets to go through if you look up here we, we do have holes there and there and there and there so we want to go ahead and add our holes and the best way to do that is to go ahead and fab yourself up a jig so what i've done is i've taken the total distance here and then figured out what rivet spacing i want over here we're doing four and a quarter inches in between our holes and then i'm going to drill out one of the existing holes pop this jig on using this little bolt to index it clamp it in place and then drill out new set of holes all the way down so that we'll end up with a nice uniform hole spacing which you can kind of see over there although it is a uh, a combination of old and new holes. That way, once we start hanging our sheets, we'll just drill out through our new holes. And the idea is that when all is said and done, we get nice uniform rivet lines like that. <laughs> And so there you can go, you can see all of our big holes are four and a quarter on center. And while I'm at it, I'm drilling out the holes where the rivets are gonna go. Just, you know, send them in there. So this side's done. We'll knock out the other side and uh, we'll go ahead and throw some primer on the bare steel just to, you know, should never get wet, but it'll be ready to start hanging sheets on this side. Spring is in the air, my friends, and today we're going to be getting very busy as soon as the fellas return from the lunch stop. Hanging skins all the way down the side of this here beautiful Thomas bus that we have raised 12 full inches. We've got our sheets of 18 gauge galvanil sheet ready to go. Our hat channels have been pre-drilled and I have gone ahead and cleaned off all the glue that was on them and got a fresh coat of my favorite Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal tsh tsh all over them. They are looking very nice. So I wanna take a minute and share with you kind of a rough, eye, rough overview, really, of how it's gonna go down. First thing we do is we grab all of our sheets and just get them lined up right here below where they're gonna go. I went ahead and ordered these sheets pre-cut by our local metal supplier. Most places will do that for you. So that way we don't have to fuss with cutting them to the right length or width. Really saves the guy some time and you get nice, perfectly straight cuts. The next thing we got, like I mentioned, all of our hat channels are primed and pre-drilled. So we're ready to go. I've got our Harbor Freight scaffolding, custom backrest lined up. There's our rivet gun. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be actually grabbing uh, a set of ratchet straps that will hook under the bottom. We'll go up and over the roof and we'll use those to just kind of stick it right up under that gutter and get it wedged under there nice and tight. Once we have our panel in and straight, we'll go ahead and we'll start riveting it in. And what we're gonna do first is just hang all the sheets. So we'll get this sheet hung then we'll do the next sheet and we'll just put in our top rivets all the way across. All right, and we'll do that all down this side. And we might even go to the other side and do that because it's really a three man job or woman. And once they're hung, then we can fall back to just the two people and it'll be me and Ty. One of us will be on the inside with a drill, drilling through our pre-drilled hat channel extensions. And then one of us on the outside with the rivet gun and also a deburring drill, um, which is really just a drill bit that, you know, shaped kind of like a cone. And that just makes sure that any of the burrs from drilling get removed so that our rivets seal up nice and flat. Because if they don't seal flat, um, well, they're not gonna look good. They're not gonna grip as good. 
and there's a chance for water ingress. So we want to avoid that at all costs. One thing we're doing is we're trying to match the factory panel seams wherever we can, because, well, it just seems nice, right? Thomas did it that way for some reason. Probably not a good one, but we're gonna follow that through. And once they're all hung, we'll just work our way down. I think we'll go typewriter style. We kind of do it different every time. Uh, we're always looking to get the sheets to lay as flat as possible. We don't want any ripples or waves. We call that oil canning in the biz. Um, it definitely helps to do this on a warm day, which we have, which is nice. That means the metal's expanded slightly, so it'll kind of shrink up nice and it won't expand as much when it gets hot again. And we'll work our way down. We'll tuck the uh, sheet underneath this rub rail. We'll, we'll kind of pry it out and tuck it in there. And uh, hopefully by the end of the day, we got all the big sheets hung and that's just gonna leave the front cap. So this piece here and the piece that wraps around just like in the back to do. That'll be huge progress today and tomorrow we'll finish framing that front area and hopefully get, if we're lucky, maybe even get the whole front done. And uh, with that in place, we'll set Ty, my guy, loose on making a custom front door for this bus and I'll get back to work putting it all together with the uh, windshield wipers and the side views and get this thing back to drivable as quickly as possible. to say I'm very pleased with this side as well check that out the way the light reflects off them you can kind of get a sense of how flat they are and these are looking really good there's a couple rivets I'm gonna redo but that's nothing you're seeing us do a lot of riveting at this phase in the roof raise and uh, I thought I'd take a minute and show you how these rivets work and why I love them so much. So this right here is a structural pop rivet. And if you look, it's closed, you can't see through it. The rivet gun grips this, and what it does is it tries to pull that end, see if you can see it clearly, pull that end through the rivet. In the process, it pinches whatever's in there and it breaks it. I'll show you what it looks like and then I'll show you how I set one. So that nice and focus there. So watch what happens when I squeeze the trigger. See that? And if there had been any sheets of metal right there, they would be pinched together now. We'll do it again and that's gonna set the rivet and break off the, the arbor. Isn't that great? So, this whole side of the bus and the other one held together completely by these. And I like these over screws because they can't loosen they're unaffected by, by vibration, and when you set them properly, they're watertight. First thing you gotta do, grab a drill, and these are quarter inch rivets. So you can use a quarter inch drill bit. I actually like to use a 17 64ths. That gives us just a little bit more wiggle room so that that rivet sets in there nice and easy. Next thing you're gonna do, get your hole and drill through. 
Now it's pretty essential when you're setting these that you deburr the hole. And if you're not gonna deburr the hole, you'll get yourself into trouble because that rivet head, the little burrs hanging out the hole, that rivet head's not gonna sit flush on it. This here is a deburring bit. You put that in the hole and it just kind of cleans it out. Take your top rivet gun, put it in the hole and pull the trigger. And I'll bring you in close so you can see that better. And one more. And there's one set rivet. There's about 1,500 of those, I think, on this roof raise. And on a big one like Ben's, I think that boy got up to about 3,000 rivets. <laughs> We are now onto the very last piece of skin for getting this roof raise completed. Ty's been hard at work um, making these two little square pieces that'll go above this door and then above the driver window. Part of that also includes making sure that the gutters and the rainwater management get put back on. And on this side, we've put on a piece of custom gutter because that's how we roll. But if you don't have access to a brake or a custom bent pieces of metal, you can always reuse what you take off. We just wanted something a little longer and something with more of a gutter shape as opposed to just a lip like the rest of the bus. But on the driver's side, we did reuse the original um, gutter rain deflector because that had the shape that we wanted and it was the right length for us to be satisfied with it. Ty is about to weld in the piece of uh, cross member that's gonna go across the top and then we'll get started just like the back, running our piece of sheet steel through the slip roll, riveting it on, and there's a very good chance that by the end of the day, we will be putting the cherry on top of this roof raise and this bus will once again be totally closed in. All right, so you can see up here, that red line is where the uh, original door gutter used to run. And then down here, we've got our new gutter. We call that J channel. Uh, for obvious reasons, as we get to the end here, you can see it's shaped like a J. And then what's going to happen is this new piece of steel, which Ty is uh, getting the framing ready for, is going to curve around the side. It's going to tuck behind our gutter. And it's also going to tuck, and then it's going to go over this sheet here, but under <laughs> those upper sheets. And getting all of your lapping straight is very important. You always want to be making sure that water will be going over laps and, um, and not trying to get caught up and uh, potentially go behind them. And then down here, behind the driver window, we had to get pretty creative because right there, uh, you know, we wanted to make sure that this trim cap, which closes off the uh, window opening here, would sit over our sheets and over the rub rail, but then the sheets also had to go behind the rub rail so that it would match what was happening on the rest of the build. Now's a good time to show you how we put these backers on. So the original cap had this to rivet through. Well, it doesn't have that upstairs. So we've got this piece of one by two, 16 gauge steel. And Ty's got that clamped to the skin um, in place. And then he's gonna weld it into the existing pieces of structure. And then we're gonna go ahead and tie from here down to where that used to mount. Um, and that's gonna give us uh, the ability to secure the front cap, keep it from being floppy, and really just kinda of lock everything in. as a guy can hope for, honestly. We've got a little trimming to do on the side because of course the radius coming around that corner is not perfectly equal on the bus, so we ended up sloped 
about an eighth of an inch. We'll grind that down and then we just have probably about 20 rivets to put in on each side and uh, boy this roof raise is basically done. I think the only thing after that is to put the uh, windshield wipers back on and we're back to where we started but you know 12 inches taller. You know, a lot of folks will tell you, bigger isn't always better. I might be one of them. But I think in this case, it's better now that it's bigger. Thanks for joining me here in the shop with the guys as we finished up the 12 inch roof raise on this 96 Thomas bus. I hope you got a lot out of these tips and tricks and following along while we do our thing here. It's a real joy of mine sharing with y'all what we've been up to because Lord knows I can't be the only one that has all this in my head, you know? Anyway, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date and be notified when my next videos drop. So if you're working on your own projects, you won't miss any of the unbelievably useful information we're putting out here. I hope you have a great day. Keep up the good work. Well, if you tuned in, <laughs> you're not doing it like that. If you tuned in for last week's set, <clears throat> we'll do it live. Okay, we're making a big, we're making a big boy, we're making a big boy's bus bigger. We're making a big boy's bus. We're making a bus for a big boy. Big boys bus.